Hey everyone, my name is Kurt Chan, Technical Evangelist at Autodesk, and today I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks in regards to working with CAM for Fusion 360 on a Mac. So let's dive right in. Number one is defining your stock box region. And what we've done in, in this release is we've now added the flexibility of doing a fixed size box. So we're all familiar with the relative size, meaning that if I want to offset 50 thousandths of an inch from the top face and the side, I can go in and key those values in. But with now with the fixed size box, I now have the flexibility of saying, well, if I have a, a piece of stock that's six by two by one inch, I can key in those parameters and base it off the model position at the center, for example. So we're giving you a couple of different options here. Another option too that we've added is we're now showing you guys the new capabilities that we have for the tool library. So let me go and edit a face operation. And of course the face operation is always one you wanna start off with. What we've done is under the tool selection is now, this is now the new tool library. And this is just a preview. We still have a lot more to add, but we're giving you the capability of now picking a specific type of material. And when you pick the tool, it would adjust the feeds and speeds depending on the type of material you're working with. So that's just kind of the vision we're going towards. Another avenue too is the tool type and the operation. So knowing that I picked a facing operation, it's filtering out all the face mills for me, which makes this just a lot easier for me to figure out, okay, well, well where are all my face mills in the library from, from the beginning? So I can go and accept the face mill I'm working with, say okay, and now apply that, that face mill. Let's dig a little bit further too. Um, let's take a look at uh, the 2D contour operation. And I'm gonna go dive right into the library. And you can see with the 2D contour, it's gonna re recommend, well, you know, end mills in, in, in regards to this, this selection I've picked. But what I can do is say, well, with the 2D contour, I have the flexibility of doing a chamfer mill. So what this does too, it now will filter out all the chamfer mills. I can go ahead and pick out the chamfer mill that I want. And then now I'm gonna go in and pick the geometry that I wanna work with. So if I zoom right in, you can see I have a chamfer just on this area. But once I select this edge, one thing you notice is that it's gonna pick up that entire loop and I don't want that. I only want that specific edge. So a great tip is that you wanna reselect the edge again. And what this does is it brings up our mini toolbar, which allows me now to say, well, let me pick open contours, which now is just gonna allow me to only pick that edge to apply the 2D Contour 2 or my chamfer mill. So just a quick tip and trick in regards to working with chamfer mills or if you wanna pick only a specific edge to apply a tool path to. Let's go do another operation. Let's see if I do a 2D pocket. And as I dig right in, let's go and go back to the tool library. I can actually, with the open pocket, it already recognized the operation. Flat end mill is probably what I wanna use, but I wanna use a quarter inch end mill. So instead of me trying to dig through all this, I can actually turn on and check on the diameter. And what this does, if I key in a quarter inch, this actually will filter through all the quarter inch end mills that I have. And now I can go through and pick the quarter inch end mill that I want, say okay. And now pick the geometry that I wanna apply it to, just like that. It gives me a nice preview of exactly what area I'm gonna be machining and shows me that, that profile in itself. So some great tips and tricks. And lastly, let's dig into another 2D operation, which we've done. 2D operation that we've kind of enhanced a little bit more is now uh, the 2D contour operation, a little bit more detail. So if I actually do a 2D contour operation, since this is a wooden piece, I probably wanna have some tabs all the way around this. So we've actually added the tab functionality. So let me just dive right in. Let me pick the, you know, pick a, an end mill that I wanna work with. And then now under the geometry, what I'm gonna do is select this outside edge, which I'm gonna machine all the way around. And then now you can see I have the tab, a tabs uh, dialog right here. If I check that on, you can see now I can define the tab shape to be rectangular or even um, triangular, depending on what, what, what you wanna do, as well as the width and the heights. And then two positioning. So I can do by distance and say, well, let me go around and key in um, 0.75 and you can see it spaced it all the way or all the way around I can even drop that down a little bit more so it evenly space it going all the way around here or I can do it by points so if I say well let me pick a couple points here and this is where I can now put the tabs that I want so just giving you a couple different options here in regards to working with tabs and applying it and applying it for for wood making 
in, in regards to just the, the process you want to go through. So hopefully this has been helpful with these four tips. Once again, we've talked about you know some new selection techniques, looking at the new tool library, looking at stock, applying stock, as well as the new tab functionality in the latest release of Cam for Fusion on a Mac. Thanks again.